biggest boy band of all time. Selling millions of records. And igniting a worldwide fan frenzy. We've been on one of the most amazing roller coaster rides you could ever ask for. Incredible, amazing. We have good times and bad times, but we love each other. Now the band is celebrating 25 years together. 25 years is pretty mind-boggling, I think, for anybody in this business. Making new music. I'm very grateful for the place that we're in right now. While enjoying their favorite gig of all. Fatherhood. It doesn't really matter that I'm a pop star. I just want to be my son's hero. This is Then and Now, The Backstreet Boys. We're five guys who love to sing and write music and hopefully we'll be around for a long time. If you were a young music fan in the late 90s, chances are you lived for The Backstreet Boys. When it first started, we were like kids in a candy store. And we didn't know what to expect. It's called the Backstreet Boys, brand new group. It all started in 1993, when wealthy Orlando entrepreneur Lou Pearlman wanted to form a new group in the spirit of New Kids on the Block meets Boys to Men. After hundreds of auditions, the lineup was complete. A.J. McLean, Nick Carter, Kevin Richardson, Brian Littrell, and Howie Durow. Looking back on some of those early years, especially when we were young, naive, that's when we really got to know each other as a group. In 1994, the Backstreet Boys landed a recording contract. Congratulations to the Backstreet Boys on their signing with Jive Records. <laughs> and the following year, released their debut single, We've Got It Going On. The song didn't make much noise in the U.S., but it blew up overseas. The first experience we ever had with, like, crazy fan reaction was in Germany. We were going to a radio interview. Hello, Germany. I'm b Rock. And this is Howie D. What's up? This is Kev. Yates. This is AJ. Oh, what's up? This is Nick. When we came out, there were a couple thousand people outside the radio station. It was like chaos because the stairwell was full of people. We were trying to get down. We couldn't get down. That was the only way out. Yeah. People were falling down the steps. It was scary. She's on top of that roof. So that was freaky to us. We were loving it. We were like, hell yeah, boys. It's taking off. We might just make it. <laughs> After the success of their international debut album, the band's first U.S. record was released in 1997 Quit games with my own. and went on to sell a staggering 14 million copies. Then Millennium happened, which topped the U.S. charts for 10 weeks in 1999 and became one of the best-selling albums of all time. It's going to be hard to top a moment like this in our lives. It really is. I mean, this Don't is incredible. Don't cry, Kevin. Don't, Don't start cry. crying. Kid. Don't no, cry. Really. Thank you. They're all grown up, and they've shown that they're here to stay. Their third album, Black and Blue, has sold 8 million copies in the U.S. and is still going strong. In early 2001, the Backstreet Boys kicked off a world tour promoting their latest album. But by July, the band had some shocking news for fans. AJ and we have come to a decision that uh, he's going to receive treatment for his excessive consumption of alcohol. We had to shut the tour down so he could go in to uh, do his thing and take care of himself. For me, you don't beat it. It's not like, okay, I'm sober, it's done. I'll never drink again. No, if you wanna stay alive, you have to work at it daily. I wanna thank everybody for all the support during my time of uh, need. I really appreciate it. Today, 64 days sober, I'm proud of myself, thank you. 
AJ rejoined the tour, but by the end of the year, the boys decided it was time to slow down. We needed a break. We, it. we obviously have never broken up ever, not once, but that was the longest stint of time where you didn't see us, you didn't hear from us, nothing was happening. We're going to the place nearby, gotta go. In 2005, after almost four years away from the spotlight, the Backstreet Boys were back with a new album and tour. How do you feel to be back in all this madness again? All right. It was great. It was good. But as soon as the tour ended, the guys dropped a bombshell. Kevin announced he'd be leaving the group. I was just burnt out. We'd been going and going and going. I felt like also that there are other parts to me creatively that I wanted to express and explore on my own. The band went on to release two more studio albums and continued to perform. He gave us his blessing to continue making music and it's something that we all wanted to do. In 2013, the Backstreet Boys hit a major milestone as they released their 20th anniversary album and embarked on a massive world tour. And there was another reason for fans to celebrate. We got, we got Kev back, so Backstreet's back. After six years away, Kevin rejoined the group. I felt like I had something to say as a writer in the studio. I was inspired again. I wanted to do it. I wanted to be there. On April 19th, 2016, Nick and his wife Lauren welcomed their first child, Odin Rain Carter. Now the guys were bound by something bigger than their music. They were all fathers. When you see these guys, you know, you see how much fun they've been having with being dad. And you know, you get a little older and you start to change. I wanted a little bit of what they had. Before I was a dad, I never really understood why Brian and you know, Kevin and these guys wanted to rush back home after a tour was done. But now I'm on that first 6 a.m. back to LA because I can't wait to get back home. We also are able to, to talk about those experiences and help one another too. It's like, oh, your son did this, or my daughter did this, or and so we help each other along the way. It's making me discover things again with fresh eyes, you know, seeing it through their eyes. They're a great reflection of you, the good things and the bad things, so they teach me a lot. I think kids really taught us that, you know, there's more to life than just always trying to achieve that next goal, that next platinum record, that next award. Take a step back, to slow down a little bit, to be able to find a good balance in life. In 2017, the band began a wildly successful residency in Sin City. You're seeing roughly four generations of fans. It's kind of surreal. Surreal! Oh my God! This girl. She wants to have a signer arm. She wants it tattooed. Our fans are the most loyal, loving, I mean, they are committed to us. She helped give us our star on the Hollywood did. Walk of Fame. She did. She did. She did. Welcome to the Hollywood Walk of Fame of Backstreet Boys. In the summer of 2018, the Backstreet Boys released a brand new single, their first in more than five years. There's something in the air right now that we have a, just a lot of love and positive energy coming our way. The group's also planning a new album and tour. 2019 right. World Tour, baby. Check it out. But this time, things will be a little different. We have, you know, a family room backstage for the family and the wives and the kids to hang out in. It used to be the VIP room, stocked with alcohol for our friends, but now Bumper. it's the family room. It's the VIB room. Very yeah. important baby. We've had a lot of great groups like 98 Degrees, NSYNC, uh, One Direction, but at some point they all separated and, and, and broke up and you guys are still here. When you're here for 25 years, that's called a career and that's what we always dreamed of. That's what we set out to do was 
to have a career and have longevity. 25 years is pretty mind-boggling, I think, for anybody in this business. Thankfully, I have the most incredible guys that I've known since I was 12 years old. That's what's made it, made it um, bearable at times and made it fun because, you know, we, we've created a bond in a, in a family that's unlike any, anything else out there. Thank you for supporting us for the last 25 years. Yes, please. Oh. Yeah.